Morning, Bullfrog here. Happy 2018 turkey season to you and happy 2018 turkey season to me. Why do you ask? Because I got my gobbler today. Opening morning and this is the first game animal I have harvested on the farm. I uh, didn't get the video I wanted to get you this morning because I intended to film the hunt. And I do have parts of the hunt film that I'll show you at the end of this video. Um, I got me working the gobbler before he flew down and then I have him flopping where I shot him. The uh, reason I don't actually have him on film is two reasons. First, um, the camera I'm filming with right now, I forgot a memory card for it. And I could have walked back to the house and got the card, but I got set up right at daylight, so I was out a little too late. Uh, he was um, gobbling real hard, and I just didn't want to risk him flying down while I was up at the house. So uh, I just stuck it out. I set up my phone to record, and uh, <laughs> that I ended up taking it off of recording. Here's why. Uh, uh, about halfway through the morning um, while I was working the gobbler um, somebody on the land next to me started working the same gobbler now here's the thing nobody has permission to hunt that land next to me uh, there's a known poacher that lives just a little ways north of me and he he hunts all out here without permission uh, I have never reported the law on them not yet I'm about to um, just because you know you, you want to be a good neighbor with somebody and not you know go pick a fight but you know he uh, <laughs> he took it too far today what happened was he was uh, he was working the gobbler on his end with a really bad crow call and uh, I was uh, you know just using my yelpers and and my slate call and he was uh, he going call call yep 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 <laughs> and it sounded really bad and uh, the gobbler ended up coming to me and not him. Well, he worked his way up near to the border of my property and he got ticked off when he heard me shoot and he started cussing me through the woods and tooting on that crow call and I think he wanted me to come out there and have a confrontation with him and I just sat tight and watched to see if he would ever show himself and he never would show himself. But um, He's, he, he, he is a well-known poacher, which means he's not a very good poacher because good poachers don't draw attention to themselves. He's got a record a mile long of, of poaching offenses. Well, anyhow, I'm going to deal with, with him in the FWC as it relates to that, but as it relates to what I want to show you today, being that I can't show you the full hunt like I wanted to, uh, instead I'm going to show you how I clean a turkey. I'm going to get set up here at my cleaning station and show you how I do it. All right, I'm set up here to clean. I'm gonna try to do it on camera best I can. Um, I can tell you, I don't, I don't keep beards anymore. I just don't. I'll actually end up throwing this away. Uh, I've, I've killed so many gobblers in my time that unless I kill one that's my personal best in terms of beard length, I don't. I just ain't gonna keep the beard. Uh, I've never been able to shoot one. I, I'm so many gobblers I've killed, but I've never broke past 10 and 3 quarter inch beards. And I have chased some that had what I estimated to be 13 inch beards and never was able to kill them. So um, if I kill one that big, yeah, I'll save his beard. But otherwise, I don't care. This is going to get thrown away. Same thing with the spurs. I don't care about the spurs. I don't know. Those might be in, might be an inch, whatever. I don't care. What I do want is his tail fan because his tail fan is decoy. And I, in fact, uh, the way he flew down today, I ended up peppering the tail fan that was on my decoy. So I've got another tail fan put up, but I'm going to cut this and save it and make another, make another decoy out of it. So first, first I'll go ahead and cut that off. Show you how that cuts off. It's real easy. Uh, his um, right here. Can you see, I've sort of taken my fingers, I'm pinching his tailbone right here. He's got a very noticeable joint right here that his tail feathers stick to. Well, no, stick to is not the right word, but they're attached to. And it's very flexible. That's how he goes up and struts, and then he puts it down and does whatever. And I'm going to take my knife here, and uh, I'm going to just cut right here on this joint. Like that. See that? Let's see if that's showing up. Yep. What you're gonna see is that the tail just comes right off. And what you want to do, so you got a little bit of meat right there. 
is take you some salt and some borax, mix them together. Take this tail and spread it out and put some maybe some books or some little bricks or whatever you have to weight it and weight them weight it on each side so it's st it stays uh, spread out take you a pan and stick this in the pan and then cover it and put underneath it salt and borax you can use just straight salt and you can actually use straight borax but i like to mix it together a little bit the salt draws the moisture off this little bit of meat that's on here and the borax preserves it and it'll just make a nice little you can make a trophy out of it i personally i think the tail fans make the prettiest trophies more so than the beards and the spurs but uh i want to save this for a decoy so let's set that aside now let's flip the bird back on its back. Now I suppose people pluck these. I don't know. I've never seen anybody pluck one in real life. Uh, what I do and what all the hunters in my family do is we skin them because there's really only two portions of meat on a wild turkey that's important that gives you any sort of um, significant uh, amount of meat. You've got the breast and you got the drumstick. We're gonna save those and we don't really care about anything else. Now there's not really a particular place that you must start. Sometimes I start at the legs like a deer and skin them that way. But for today's purposes, I'm gonna start right here just because it's gonna make it a little bit easier for me to film. This is his drum right here, by the way. That right there, that bone. And up in here when he's strutting, you can't hear it when you're far away, but when you're close to him, you can hear him hit this drum. Boom, boom, boom. It doesn't quite sound like that, but it's a, it's a deep bass sound that he makes. Um, and uh, it, it carries a long way and other turkeys can hear it, but that's what he's hitting right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm just cutting right there to expose me a little hole in the skin without cutting into the meat. Can you see that? I think, yeah, I think that's showing up. And by the way, they don't have very particularly tough skin, but you do want your knife sharp all the same. And I'm going to get just kind of a, I'm using my fingers to sort of pull under the, under the skin there to kind of get it started and then I'm going to stick my knife under here and start cutting with it and once I get it going I'm going to cut it all the way all the way forward here and really the most aggravating thing to deal with are the feathers that's because they kind of get in your way but see I got my knife in there now and I'm just cutting up, cutting up through the skin. This particular gobbler is really fatty. Really fat. Now see, if you wanted to save the beard, before I, before I would have started on this, you would have cut the beard off with a little bit of meat. You don't want to cut it too short or it'll fall apart. You need to leave some meat on there so it'll the, the hairs will stay together. But, I don't care about his beard. So I'm gonna just keep on skinning up a ways. Okay. And then I'm gonna skin back. And see this way, when you get away from that fat that's on his chest, it cuts a lot easier. And now I'm gonna just try to cut this way and this way to sort of expose the breast. Like so. Hmm. I smell this crawl a little bit. Stinks. I cut into the breast a little, or a little bit of the meat. That's okay. That's all right. Okay, 
This is my breast right here. This is what we want to save. Oh, something else you can do. I didn't do it. You don't really have to do it. But a lot of people cut the wings off too. I might do that just because as the bird is dead, they get kind of stiff and they sort of work against you as you're kind of cutting into this. Well, like I said, I don't really care. I see I'm getting that breast good and exposed. And it's real easy to cut out. It's, uh, getting a little bit of hair on it, but that's all right. I say hair, feathers, and beard hair. All right, I've got enough of it exposed now that I don't need to skin any more this way, not to get the breast out anyhow. I'm gonna take this bone right here and take my knife and hug the edge of this bone. What we're doing is we're cutting the breast off of this bone, like so. See that? And it's, it, it'll cut really easy. Got a little bit of this crawl meat stuck to here. That's all right. We'll cut that off when we get otherwise get it unattached. Now see, we got the breast meat I cut into a little bit there, but see, I got it cut right there off that bone. And now we're gonna start cutting it a little bit underneath. Like so. Watch your fingers. Like I'm cutting left-handed now, so I got to be extra careful. I go down here at the bottom. Okay, now, I left a little sliver right there. If you wanted to be a perfectionist, you would get that too. But you can see, generally, we got most of the meat now. This is the breast, one of the breast. We're gonna do the same thing to the other breast. Now, that's a, that's a good hunk of meat right there. I'm gonna throw this in the cooler, give me just a second. Um, I just, I, I, by the way, the way I treat these is uh, I treat them just like deer. I wash it off, put it on ice in a cooler and let it sit in the cooler a couple days and then I'll come back and um, um, and then prepare them for freezing after that. But you let it sit in the ice water a couple days, kind of let the meat get bloated with water. That'll help draw out any blood that's left and that will also uh, help it freeze better. Actually this meat is really hot so I'm going to go wash it under the cool water first before I put it on in the uh, uh, cooler. Give me just a second. Well, this just ain't my morning. Uh, my card ran out while I was getting the second breast. I'm not sure where it ran out at, but I got the second breast off. I'm going to go wash it off, cool it down a little bit, and then uh, I'll show you how I get the drumsticks. All right, last thing to get is the drumstick. I'm only going to show you one of them because my memory card is about empty. I mean, sorry, about full. And uh, it's kind of like skinning a deer out and then boning the leg off of a deer, it's sort of the same thing. See from cleaning my breasts off here, 
I kind of got some of the leg muscle exposed here. What we're going to do is we're going to just work that skin on back off of it. Which is not that hard to do. It's just kind of tedious because you do got to split it. It's usually best to split on the inside of the leg just like you would a deer. There we go. Now see, some of it we're going to just be able to pull straight back now. And see when I'm, we've kind of got that, the hip exposed right there. I just broke it back. And I'm going to just cut to the ball joint right there. Is that on camera? Yeah, see the ball joints right there. I'm just cutting right through the leader. Like that. Cutting along the hip. That is your drumstick right there. You see a little touch of meat right there, but for the most part we got it all. That's the hip right there. We're gonna cut the leg off. Kind of work it, work it loose a little bit. The way I'm cutting the leg is just right through the the joint and you gotta kind of work it around a little bit and you'll feel it I haven't quite got there yet but you'll feel it when it gets into the leader right there and when you cut into that then you can eventually break it like that and then just Cut off what remains. All right, if you wanted to keep the foot or the spurs as a trophy, there you got it. I don't care. That's going to get thrown out to the coyotes. Uh, you take them feathers off the end there, but otherwise, I got my drumstick. I'm about out of memory on my memory stick here so I'm gonna quit recording I'll show you at the end of this video <laughs> the what little bit of hunting footage I did get but this has been Bullfrog thank you for watching I got a lot more videos coming down the pipe this weekend so stay tuned Not 
Shooting a nice gobbler on my own property in my backyard is wonderful. Stealing it from a poacher is priceless. This has been Bullfrog. Thank you for watching.